As somebody who's worked in heating and air conditioning trade for several decades now, I've trained hundreds of people on how low voltage control wiring works in heating and air conditioning systems. I'm going to teach you how control circuits work in the simplest terms I possibly can. And on top of that, I'm going to correct some very common misconceptions that a lot of people adopt when they first start learning this stuff that only makes it harder for them to learn 20 other things down the road. We're going to set you up for success. So. Let's start with this. Most heating and air conditioning systems have major components in them that require high voltage in order to make heating and air conditioning actually work. So in an air handler, for example, you're gonna have a blower motor that's gonna run on 115 or 230 volts. Sometimes they'll have heat strips in them. On a furnace, you're also gonna have a blower motor that runs on 115 volts. Inducer motors that also run on 115. You have hot surface igniters, which is a little stick that glows that actually ignites the gas once we open up the gas valve. That usually has 90, 100 volts on it. Outdoor condensing units, we have our condenser fan motors and compressors that run on 230 volts. Hydronic boiler has a circulator pump that moves hot water up to the baseboard of the radiators. What a low voltage control circuit actually does is that we use a 24 volt circuit to manipulate a switch that's located on a high voltage circuit so that we can turn all of these pumps and motors on and off when we need to. So what you're looking at here is a schematic on how this basically works. Now don't worry about the schematic and the wiring, it's the principle I want you to focus on here. Now a control device, one of the most popular everybody knows about is a thermostat, right? So our thermostat turns on and turns off our heating and cooling systems. So this control device receives 24 volts from the unit and there's a transformer inside the unit that sends 24 volts to it. And when this control device decides to turn on heating or cooling or whatever it may be, it closes a switch that is designated just for that purpose. Now once this switch is closed, the 24 volts can go through it and it travels on to some kind of a relay. Now in these relays we have a relay coil and when a current flows through these coils it creates a magnetic field. So these are called electromagnetic coils and when it creates a magnetic field what it does is it closes another switch that actually controls a high voltage circuit. So this is exactly the same thing as you walking into a room and turning the lights on and off by flipping a switch. The only difference is that instead of you doing it physically um, we're using 24 volts to manipulate a switch that does the same thing, turning motors on and off. The only thing you have to remember right now is that we're using a low voltage switch to turn on and off a high voltage switch. If you walk away with nothing else but that, you're, you're good. So on to the main attraction here. This is a drawing I made up for you guys that represents very typical heating and cooling low voltage control circuits. Um, by the way, um, you can download this in a link below in the description box if you want it, um, along with the schematic we just went over with the relay. Now all low voltage control circuits begin as high voltage. So the high voltage is coming from a breaker and your electrical panel in the house. Now for furnace this is going to be a 15 or 20 amp single pole breaker, usually 15. Uh, for air handlers on air conditioning systems, this can be either the same thing, 15 or 20 amp single pole breaker, or a lot of times you might actually find a 15 or 20 amp double pole breaker because some of these air handlers run on 230 rather than 115. We're talking about the blower motor and the air handler. But in either case, the goal is the same thing here. We have to get power up to the control board in the unit. So the control board receives that power and this is the high voltage we need to run any major components that are either in the furnace or the air handler. So we're talking about the blower motor um, and the furnace, the inducer draft motor, the hot surface igniter and so on. Now this voltage also goes to a transformer. So it takes that 115 or 230 volts and turns it into 24 volts. Now it's not always going to be exactly 24 volts. You usually see anything between 24 and 30. Now once that 24 volts comes off the transformer, it goes back to the control board and goes through a fuse. Now this is going to be a 3 amp or a 5 amp fuse. Once it goes through the fuse, it then ends up on the R terminal on our control board. Now this is the beginning of our low voltage wiring on our controls, right? So if this were a race, the R terminal is the starting line. If this were the universe, the R terminal is the big bang. If this is biblical, the R terminal is Genesis 1. And everything starts here. 
Now you're always going to have 24 volts on this R terminal all the time, unless your breaker's tripped, unless your switch is shut off, unless your transformer is burnt out, or your fuse is blown. Um, also on a furnace, if your door switch is open, uh, you will always have 24 volts on this R terminal. Now. The 24 volts on this R terminal goes up to the R terminal on a thermostat. Now this is usually on a red wire. Now this is the 24 volts we talked about going to our control device. We have our thermostat, which is our control device, and this is the 24 volts going up to it. Now earlier in the video I mentioned one of the misconceptions a lot of people have is that the red wire always goes on the R terminal. And the reason why I'm bringing this up because every single person I've ever trained they always start with the same idea in their head that there's a relationship between the color of the wire and the terminal it goes on. So what I mean here is red goes on R, white goes on W, yellow goes on Y and so forth. Now this is okay for a thermostat that's usually how it goes but when you start getting into control wiring a control board you're often going to find different color wires landing on terminals that don't match the letter of that color. So this can lead to a lot of confusion and it makes it even harder for people to learn. So it's very important to understand what these wires are actually doing. Once you understand what they're doing, you don't have to remember the color of the wires anymore. All these wires can be the same color and you're going to still know what they do. Now let's start in cooling mode. Um, in cooling mode, our thermostat is going to do two things. The first thing it's going to do is close a switch between R and Y. Now, this is the low voltage switch that we talked about earlier that's eventually going to control a high voltage switch. So, when the, that switch closes, the power can now travel from R terminal to the Y terminal, and then it follows a wire back to the Y terminal on a control board. Now, another misconception a lot of people adopt early on that only ends up confusing them later is that Y is for cooling. I want you to wipe Y is from cooling from your memory forever, um, and here's why. If you always remember as why is cooling, when you start getting into learning how to do heat pump wiring, uh, eventually you're going to be told when the heat pump goes into heating mode, it will activate the Y terminal, which turns on the contactor in the outdoor unit. And you're going to be confused. You're going to say, wait a minute, I thought Y was only for, for cooling. Um, and it's not true. It's also for heating. So if you always remember why is the contactor, you're not going to be confused later on when you start learning about heat pump wire. And they're going to tell you why pulls the contactor on the outdoor unit and the heat pump in heating mode. And you're going to say, yeah, I knew that. Why is for the contactor? Uh, so it makes it a lot easier for you so you don't have to reconcile things that, just so that you can keep moving forward and learning. So going back to the Y terminal and control board, you're always going to see another wire landing on that same exact terminal. And I'll give you one guess where it goes. It goes to the contactor in the outdoor unit. Now, before we get to the contactor, uh, this Y terminal sometimes serves different functions. So um, on some units, when that Y terminal is energized, the control board will use that signal as an indicator of what speed to run the blower at. So your blower actually gets activated off of that Y terminal rather than the G terminal, uh, like a lot of people have learned. Um, in some cases, you might have a air handler that doesn't actually have a full-fledged control board on it. Uh, you will have what's called a fan relay board, and you will not even have a Y terminal. What you'll have is a wire coming from your thermostat that directly wire nuts to another wire that goes directly out to the contactor. So there is no Y terminal on those particular air handlers. Um, in those cases, the fan relay board actually does use the G terminal to turn the blower on. It's the only way the blower will come on with those. So that is uh, one situation where the G terminal is essential for the blower to come on, but sometimes it's done off the Y terminal. Now this 24 volts from the Y terminal goes to the contactor in the outdoor unit. And the contactor in the outdoor unit is like our relay. It has an electromagnetic coil in it. When it gets energized, it creates a magnetic field which closes the plungers on the contactor. And that allows 230 volts to flow through it to turn on our compressor and our condenser fan motor. Now this is always going to be 230 volts. It's going to come from a two-pole breaker in the electric panel. It could be anywhere from 20 to usually 40 amps. Uh, sometimes on really old condensing units, you'll see it a little higher, maybe 50 or 60 amps. But typically, if you see a 50 or 60 amp breaker, it's going to be a sub panel or something along those lines. Now, after the 24 volts goes through our contactor coil, it returns on another wire that goes back to common on a control board. And again, this can be any color. It could be red, it could be white, it could be blue. But it's going back to common. And from common on the control board, it eventually goes 
back to common on the transformer and that completes our entire cooling circuit. Now our thermostat also closes another switch in cooling mode and that is from R to G. Now as I mentioned earlier, um, this G terminal will send 24 volts down to the G terminal on the control board and in a situation with a fan relay that is what actually activates your blower motor. Um, but on other systems, uh, your that 24 volts on a G terminal doesn't actually do much of anything. The only other function that wire does have is if you look on your thermostat you will see an auto on feature for the fan. Um, when you turn your fan to on what that essentially does is that 24 volts overrides the control board and now you're manually controlling the blower motor in the uh, furnace or the air handler so it'll run non-stop until you physically shut it off and that's it that is the entirety of our basic cooling control circuit now in heating mode we're going to keep this pretty simple the switch closes between r and w that 24 volts goes from the w on the uh, thermostat 2W on the control board and from here it goes to a lot of different places. I do have a video that goes into all that internal wiring on the furnace. Um, this is all manufactured wiring but it is part of the control circuit and the burner circuit so if you want to watch that video I'll link it below but ultimately it's going to go to one to two places. It's either going to go to a gas valve that has a low voltage solenoid on it so all we need is that 24 volts to open or close the gas valve or it's going to go to a relay that closes a high voltage circuit for to energize the heat strips. And the heat strips are often going to be on a separate breaker on themselves. So that one's going to be pretty high. It could be 60 amps, it could be 100 amps. Um, that's going to be a pretty big one. Now one other thing worth mentioning here in heating mode is that your thermostat does not send out a signal on the G terminal for the blower. This is completely controlled by the control board itself. And the reason why is because in heating mode we want to delay the starting of the blower motor until the heat exchanger has had a chance to heat up. Um, if we were to start the blower motor right away, we would just be blowing cold air through the furnace and circulating cooler air throughout the house. So it would just be like creating a breeze. Um, and that's not what we want to do in winter time. We want to wait for the heat exchanger to heat up and then we activate the blower motor. So there's usually a 60 or 90 second delay or something like that. Um, and then the control board activates it. Now the common wire on the thermostat. Obviously if you have a smart thermostat, you're going to need one of those for it to charge but you can also hook that wire up on a battery powered operated thermostat and it will run without batteries so you don't have to worry about changing batteries anymore another thing I want to say about the common is that if you're ever trying to check for voltage on the R terminal on your thermostat, you need that common as a reference point in order to actually get a reading on your multimeter. So if you don't actually have a common on the thermostat, one thing you can do is use the W, the Y, or the G terminal to substitute as a common because they all go back to common on a transformer eventually anyway. The only thing you don't want to do is use one of those terminals if the switch is closed, you'll get a zero volt reading. So that's basically it. I'm just going to leave it at that. I have plenty of other videos you guys can watch that go deeper into the weeds with this stuff, but this is a great foundation to start off with.